we can start the video by showing all of your awesome burnout marks here. I don't have a doorbell, so you do a burnout in my driveway and then I know you're here, so. So this is interesting because I didn't even realize a property like this even existed on Big Island. You know, we're out here actually shooting a bunch of cars and checking out some of the car culture, but a lot of people were telling me that I need to go check out Ryan's collection. And uh, you've had a Super Street feature before. Yes, yep, about a year or two ago. So tell me about this property. This is crazy. It's almost um, like you have your own little racetrack here. <laughs> so it's uh, about five acres here. And when we moved in, it was just the house here. It's not a, anything special. It's just about 2000 square foot home uh, with a, an Ohana guest house and a two car garage. But being a car guy, two car garage ain't, ain't gonna cut it. So we added the, the garage on. Let's check it out. All right. I'm assuming that's probably your daily driver, huh? Uh, yeah, that and the Junker Tacoma over there, yeah. <laughs> and th that is a plaid? Yes. Does yep. it have a yoke? Yes. Can we take a Ab look at it Absolutely, real quick? yeah. It's kind of torn apart too, unfortunately. I'm, <laughs> yeah, trying, I'm trying to get it into the eights this weekend, so. This is something that you can actually use on the island because you do have a drag strip here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the local car culture here is awesome. The old school stuff. It's so cool. I love going down to the drag strip because you see a little bit of everything. You know, everybody's welcoming. There's not, you know, any issues because you're an import guy or a domestic guy or anything like that. I go down with an electric car and, you know, I've, I haven't had anybody say anything negative. Is this the quickest car on the island? Uh, no, I mean, there's some legit drag cars on the island. What about street car? Well, What's your, you know, what's your definition of street car? <laughs> so, I mean, I would say it's the fastest truly stock car on the island. So, but um, you, you've actually gutted it. Yeah, Can yeah. we open this? Yep. So the Tesla doesn't get pissed off, like it, it's you know, okay? It, it definitely is notifying me that the rear airbags are having issues and it's notifying you of all that, but it's still not cutting the power or anything like that. We'll see, I have, some uh, Kevlar driver's seat for it. I'm in the process of installing that. I'm curious to see if the car freaks out over that. Oh, of course. Really, really nice. Sparco. Yeah, but I like that you still, oh, it's from Unplugged. Yeah. Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got their, their front and rear uh, carbon ceramic brakes on this car and the, the wing on the back. They put the wrap on for me, their sister company, Bulletproof Automotive. Yeah, uh, yeah. this is so cool. So seat out. You don't need a passenger. How no. much weight do you think you took out of this thing? I've been meaning to measure it, but you know, I think the stock seats are 100 pounds a piece. I think these ones are gonna end up being, with the harnesses and the sliders, probably 30-ish. So I'll be dropping a fair amount there. And then the front rotors, I saved, I think was 12 pounds on the front rotors and 10 on the rear, going to the carbon ceramics. I have a set of, 19 inch magnesium wheels that I want to say they were like 17 pounds. So I say, I think the stocks are 25. So, you know, it's, it's adding up and especially when it's the, the sprung weight. Yeah. So I think I have my fingers crossed to be able to get in the eights. Last time I took it there, I didn't have the rear brakes on and it kept spinning. I'm going to try to spray some VHT on the tires this time and see if we can get it to stick. I'm still trying to use the stock tires. Aftermarket wheels, but stock tires. Why is that? Well, it'd be cool to be able to say I did it on stock tires to get into the eights. I don't, no one is, there's only been a couple of plaids that have gotten into the eights and none of them have been on stock tires. So it'd be cool to do it on the stock tires and they don't make a lot of great tire choices in 19s uh, for as big of a sidewall as you still need for this. So for you being in Hawaii, is it a advantage or a disadvantage in terms of like the track? Is it a faster track or? I'm not a, an experienced enough racer to answer that question. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, obviously elevation doesn't really matter. Yeah. Honestly, maybe elevation that's higher would work better for an electric car because it's less air resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there you you're right on that. Yeah, our track's probably at 20 feet elevation or so. It's right, right. down in Hilo, um, right near the ocean. So, so but do you charge this or do you top this off before you actually go? I have not done it yet because I have had a hard time charging it at the local charging station. We have really crappy charging stations here. You should be, you know, fully charged to try to get the fastest time. So yeah. I've always been down 50 miles right out of the gate. So. Um, I'm hoping this weekend I can top off and get traction and 
just get so it done. Is that whole setup just the charger? No, 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 it's a, a PV solar system for our house because uh -huh. we're all off grid here. So cool. Okay, so enough about your daily. <laughs> Even though this is the quickest car or maybe the quickest yeah, car on the island. Is. It it's definitely still is. It's yeah. still cool to me and it just shows up motorsports has yeah. evolved and we can still yeah. enjoy vehicles even though it's an electric car. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yep. But I'm so excited because I kind of know what you have, but I yeah. don't really know what you have. <laughs> right. But you built this entire structure. Yeah, yep. This looks like a house. Kind of, yeah. I, I, I tried to plan, my wife wanted it to match the house so it didn't look like an afterthought was her big thing. And, you know, someday, I will not be into cars anymore, unfortunately. I, we will all get to that age. And I wanted it to be something that, you know, somebody else, I didn't want to over improve the property, right? And have something that nobody else would want. So it's like, well, keep in mind the layout um, that somebody else could turn it into a second house because there are, are a lot of uh, multi-generational families that live on island. So it's not uncommon to have, you know, one family here and, you know, an uncle or auntie living, you know, right, right. right close by, so. Okay, so, so it has a, has like a keypad and everything. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It, it looks like I'm just going into somebody's house. Sorry, it's kind of a mess in here. Oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting this. What, what the? So where do you want to start? You have a problem. I do, yeah, yep. A really good problem. Yeah. I legitimately have the chills right now. This is legitimately my first time seeing this collection. Yeah, there's some craziness going on. So tell me about this. Uh, well, it's a, a Tesla Swap Supra. You know, everybody asks, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, my first answer is I already have another Supra with a 2J in it. So when you- And it's the same color. Same color, yep. So when you check that box, right, then you know, then you can, I feel like, mess with something like this. This car was, you know, in an accident when I bought it. It was a roller, it's right-hand drive. So, you know, all the people that are diehard Supra people that hate me for doing this, and they say, oh, you, you took a Supra off the road. No, I actually brought one. I put one back on the road because this was a roller when I bought it. And um, then, so when you say it was a roller, did it have a cage or yep, anything? Yep, the cage, yeah, the previous owner was using it to road course and tried to sell it, couldn't sell it, so he just started parting it out. So when I bought it, you know, it had the rear subframe in it. The interior was already gutted. It did have, you know, the dash was in there, but uh, the interior was gutted, it was caged, motor transmission were out. Um, so I just kind of picked it up from there. So then, did you do all this yourself? So no, definitely not. Um, I don't have a background in electrical engineering or automotive or anything like that. I just, I fell in love with Supras long ago and I like the look of them. And then about five years ago, I fell in love with Teslas owning a P85 Model S. And then I got the idea to, you know, put them together, kind of take the look of the Supra, but the advantages of an electric motor and, and do this. But yeah, I had, some local guys that have helped me with the wrenching. I have a fabricator that's local. My tuner has been like super instrumental. He came out and visited and saw what I was doing. He's like, oh, I wanna get in, I wanna get involved in this and help out, which was great because I would have be lost without him. Yeah, He's, but you're the conductor. Like they come here to your property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing a lot of the wiring myself. That's kind of on me, but um, you know, I'm constantly pestering other people like, hey, you know, why doesn't this work? You know, how, how am I supposed to do this? And luckily there's a lot of people that seem to uh, be willing to still answer my phone calls. I don't know why, but. It, th this is great because you're kind of on the forefront of this, right? I understand that this is a thing now, Yeah. right? But I've never seen anybody do this with a Mark IV Supra and. No, I, I, it, to my knowledge, it's the first Mark IV that's been Tesla swap for better or worse. But that was kind of what interests me. It's cool to do something different. like. What, what kind of hasn't been done with a Mark IV Super, right? They're a thousand horsepower and one, not a big deal anymore, right? Yeah, um, that's so, old hat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so it, it's just, to me, it was interesting, like, oh, let's, let's do something different. So then, what did this come out of? Did this okay. come out of like a P85 or? Yeah, pr pr pretty much a P90, uh, actually. Okay. So it's a Model S or Model X, they use the same stuff, but that's half the batteries out of one. Yeah, it's Where's a lot of batteries. Why is it all out right now? So over the last couple of years, we built it and the goal was like, make it run. So it took about a year and a half to make it drive, 
drove it a little bit for you know a few months, and then like everybody else, like let's make it faster. There's a Tesla subframe under there. Got it. Okay, yeah. so you actually want to do over fenders? Yeah, we have a, a Ridix kit that's all painted, ready to go. Makes me wonder what Arito is going to think about this yeah. build <laughs> once it's done. Yeah. Well, you know, at this point, I like I said, it looked terrible before, but now I'm trying to make it look good. Are you going to keep it green? Though? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was white before, and we painted it about uh, a month ago. Yeah, we haven't wet sanded it or anything like that. We just kind of sprayed it and put it back in here, and I've been working on the inside. We're gonna weld up some of the holes, spray the inside, then it's going to my fabricator who's going to put a front drive unit in it. So this is going to be all wheel drive. Then. Yeah, and with the push of a button, you will be able to choose if you want it all wheel drive, just rear wheel drive, just front wheel drive. And I have hopes with the help of AEM that we'll be able to independently control the drive units and actually make them go in opposite directions as well at the same time. So you could do a you know, burnout with the car trying to tear itself apart or push itself together, just, that is, just for fun. That is so cool. <laughs> I, I think so, I'm glad you appreciate I just, that. I'm yeah. so, I just love this so much because you really have already adopted this technology yeah. by enjoying these cars and taking them to the track and actually showing yeah. how to modify them and how fast you can go. Yep. Now you're taking it to the next level. I'll be honest, I just don't think they look good. I just yeah. don't think a lot of these new electric cars, yeah. while I understand they're really fast, yeah. just don't have the soul, yeah. right? Yeah, no, and there's, then, there's definitely I, truth in that. If you're a 90s, 80s kid, even a 2000s kid, how could you not like the Mark IV Super? Yeah. You know, fast and hard, furious, yeah, and just so it. much of car culture has led us up to this point for us to like enjoy these shapes. Yeah. Not only the Supra, you know, NSX, and you have, you have pretty much the JDM collection. Like this is, this is the trio, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Mazda, yeah. Honda, yeah. Nissan. I mean, what's next for you? Um, well, in hopefully in about uh, four to six months, I have um, a Hako in California that's been being rebuilt for the last two years, so that'll arrive. So I'm looking forward to having that here. But at, I think at that point, um, I never want to say I'm done, done, but I, I think I am kind of done with cars. There's a lot of other cars that I would love to add. I'd love like an S15, an Evo, like there's a long list like everybody else. I, like a 240Z, I'd love to have something like that. But You have I enough just, room, sir. Uh, I, I kind of don't like, you know, I, it, I need another garage is really what I need. Cause like, I don't, I don't like working in here around have, all these other cars. You so. have a lot of room. I do have a lot of room. I could build another garage, but no one's going to feel bad for me, but I have all the toys I want, but no time to enjoy them. Like yeah. the, Understood. Uh, the, let's see, what is it? This car made it out of the garage, um, a couple weeks ago for a photo shoot. And that's the first time any of these cars have been out of the garage all year. So, um, can, can we take a look at this stuff before we dig into some sure, of your other sure. cars? So this was actually in the Supra. Yes. So this is the lower battery box in the front. So the, 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 the motor or the drive unit sits in the subframe in the back of the Supra. Um, and it's in there now, if you want to kind of crawl under there and take a look at it, but, uh, half the batteries sit in the front and the, this is the lower box, which holds two batteries. And then the upper box holds six more. That's a, a drive unit. That's the drive unit that's gonna go in the front. That's the motor right there Got it. on the left side. And then the diff is in front. And then the inverter, which controls it, is sitting over there on the bench. Um, normally they're mounted together and you mount the whole thing. The whole thing sits in the subframe, but it's too wide to fit in the rails of the Supra. So we're gonna remote mount that. I love this. Yeah, the guys at uh, Salvage to Savage yeah. made that piece, which love saved me guys. a ton of time in trying to, you know, like 3D scan that. That's not my thing, so. How did you get all of the driveline stuff? Did um, you buy it? So I bought, uh, originally when I first decided to do the Supra, um, I reached out to Stealthy V. Um, they sell kits, and I basically told them, here's what I want to do, and they kind of put a whole package together that includes, you know, the batteries, the drive unit, and subframe. Um, an onboard charger, a DC to DC converter to take the high voltage because you no longer have an alternator, but you still have a 12 volt system. So the um, DC to DC converter takes 
high voltage from your high voltage battery pack, converts it down to 12 volts to charge and run your lights and everything else. So they kind of supplied that pack um, and I put that in the car. Um, now I've recently found a couple places online that buy salvage Teslas and tear them apart and offer all the parts so you can buy kind of anything you want and yep. get it shipped to you. Because those batteries uh, on the actual Tesla, they're structural, right? Or it's like the bottom. I, I think of the, it. the newer ones are the, what they call them like a 4680. Um, they're structural now. These ones were not. They are in this giant, like, I don't know, tuna can type thing mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm. you know, pretty sealed up. And once you open it, you know, it's very hard to get it back together. Got it. Yeah. And then in terms of weight, that must mean it must weigh a lot more than it's, your internal combustion. Most lot. people think that, and that does make sense. And if I had, you know, full interior on that car and, um, you know, a radio and all these other things, I think it would get pretty heavy. Those Tesla batteries for that size pack, that's a 90 kilowatt pack, um, weighs 900 pounds, just the batteries, not even the battery boxes or, you know, all the coolant lines or anything. So, um, I weighed that car and with two seats in it, the cage, um, you know, all the body panels and everything running around, um, it was about 100, 150 pounds heavier than that car. That's it? Yep. That's not yep. bad. Yeah. And you know, with that, that cage is very involved. So if that wasn't in there, I think that would make them pretty even. Again, no air conditioning, no heat in that car. You know, we live in Hawaii, you really don't need that. Yeah. So. All right, so let's talk about your internal combustion Supra then. <laughs> what's, yeah. what, what's the story behind this? Uh, well, this was my first love, really. Um, you know, when I was a high schooler, you know, these cars kind of just came out. Um, I, I loved them. My stepbrother had uh, a Mark III Supra, and he took me for a ride in that thing, and uh, he just about killed us. And I, after that, once we got home and I was still alive, I was like, someday, you know? But I was more interested in the Mark IVs and the Mark III's. Um, had a couple opportunities to buy one, and my wife, uh, my girlfriend at the time, you know, was smart and said, "Hey, why don't you invest that, you know, that money instead of buy something like this?" Um, which was really smart to invest the money and because I probably would have been dead if I got one, you know, in my twenties. <laughs> but uh, when I was uh, about 30, 31. Um, she said, hey, you should finally get that Supra you wanted. So this was kind of how it started. I, I bought this car. It took me about six months to find what I wanted. Um, but uh, it's a twin tur original twin turbo six speed. Can uh, we take a look at that? Yeah. Engine? Now it has uh, an HKS T51R in it. Jeez. Have you taken this to the drag strip? Yeah. Here? Yep. I used to run this uh, a quarter mile and half mile back when I lived in Arizona. And uh, I took it down to the drag strip here for about a year, trying to, to get a good time. I made one 10 second pass in Arizona and I've been trying to get back into the tens ever since, but either I'm a horrible driver, which is probably what it is, or these are really hard to launch. <laughs> yeah, well, I know for sure this is really hard to launch. Yeah. How much power do you think you're making with this? Uh, on high boost, this made uh, 888. Yeah. That is something else. So then you weren't able to put down a, 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 a pass in the electric Supra or? No, I've never, I haven't taken it to the drag strip. Um, and that was mostly strategic. I've taken a lot, of, a lot of crap online for doing that and I knew that was coming and I'd never back away from you know, an argument with somebody, but uh, I knew how, I know, you know based on driving on the street how fast it would be at the drag strip and I'm like, I'm not interested in giving anybody, you know, any ammo to, to talk to me. It's like, you know, once I put the front motor in it, I think it's gonna be fast enough that nobody's gonna have anything to say. When you spin so, all four. Yeah. Uh, and probably on some pretty sticky tires. Yeah. It's gonna turn some heads. Yeah, yeah, and it will be much lighter as well. We found a new battery pack. I actually just paid for it today. That's why I was down in Kona, was wiring the money for the battery pack, but I found a, um, a guy in Texas, uh, Lone Star EV Performance, they build race batteries for EVs, and we have a battery pack that is going to be like four times as powerful as the Tesla pack. 
and instead of 900 pounds, it's gonna weigh 300 pounds. So we're gonna drop 600 pounds and it'll discharge four times the amperage that a Tesla pack will. It, probably because it's not designed for not, longevity and exactly. range, it's yep. more designed That's the trade-off, yep. When I built this car, it was like, you know, I wanna, I want a drag car, but I also want to be able to cruise around town. You know, it's like anything. It's like, you got to kind of pick what you want, right? Like yeah. cheap, fast, reliable, pick two. Right. Kind of the same thing. That's the same thing with electric cars. It's like range, speed, and cheap. Like what, you still have to pick two. You can't, and, and really it's almost like you kind of pick one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to get range and speed, you know, it's, it's going to be very tough. Do you know anybody who's done all a drive swap on a Mark IV? In like even if it's yes. internal combustion? Yes, because I in trying to figure out how to do it, I've spent a ton of time researching. Um, there have been either one or two guys in Russia that did it. Uh, they were using the R34 transmission, and I don't know suspension-wise what they were using, but there's very little information on the internet. There's a couple YouTube videos and that's it. And then there's a guy in California, it's a speed force racing that has um, a bright orange, wide body, I think it's a V12 Supra that mm, is, wow. um, that, and again, he used the R34 transmission and uh, I found some information on it, it's still kind of limited. He does sell a kit for it, but it's highly, highly expensive. <laughs> and for me, he wanted to sell everything um, as a kit and I'm not using most of it. You know, I'm yeah. not using the, the, the axles or any of that stuff. I can't, that doesn't work with a Tesla drive unit. So I was really more looking for, you know, the suspension side of it. Um, but we found a different option after a lot of research. I just cannot wait to see this lined up against yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. At the drag strip in <laughs> yep. Hilo. Yep, that, that was the goal. When actually, when we originally started this, my goal was make that faster than this. And like I said, I'm a miserable driver, so normally like a low 11 second pass is what I can do in this. It's just kind of all over the place. Or I bog the turbo. So it's not asking that much out of it to beat this. But then um, about halfway into the build, I bought the Plaid and that was the new goal. It's like, all right, now it has to beat the Plaid. <laughs> and then potentially with the new batteries, it could because it, yeah. it doesn't have all that extra stuff. Yeah, so it, it'll be interesting to run yeah, it'll, that car will eat this car at, at this point. Um, the electric Supra will eat this one once we get it done. The Plaid will be interesting because the Plaid will be, I think they'll be pretty equal horsepower wise, um, but the Plaid is definitely more aerodynamic. It's way more efficient, um, but it also will be, you know, like a thousand pounds heavier or more. Is, and with you making that 10 second pass, was it on street tires or? No, was it was it on, on? Uh, slicks and skinnies. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. All right, since we're right next to it, let's talk about your FD. Oh, What's going on with this? Here, I'll get it out of the way quick so everybody can, can you know, if they're not mad at me for the electric Supra. <laughs> you you know, just like to go. <laughs> they can be mad, you know, about this. Oh, okay, all yep. right. LS3, it's got a, basically a T56, and then a Ford nine inch. I mean, but, this, this is such a common swap yeah. that there's so many people that actually swap these back to rotary. You know, yeah. like it's that common, yeah. right? Because it's like, for the longest time, people didn't want to deal with the rotary, so they put this in. Yeah. And then now it's like these vehicles have gone up so much in value, mm -hmm. it, it's worth it to yeah. put the 13B back yeah. into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then uh, how much power is this making? So it's, it's a stock LS3, so I think that's about, was that 415 or so? And the same on the torque. This is cool. But, yeah, I bought this car pretty much as it sits, as you see it. I think, you know, I put a couple little carbon pieces on it. Um, and other than that, I've, I've left it alone. I would, I would have preferred a different power plant in it, honestly, but, you know, it's hard to find an FD in this sort of shape anymore. You know, a lot of them are pretty rough, so. Um, Did you buy any of these in Hawaii? No. All of these were from the mainland? Yep. Arizona or wherever? Yeah, yeah. Well, this obviously. Yeah. This was in California when I bought it, yeah. All right, so tell me about your R34. Base um, eye blue. Yep. Best color yep. ever. Yep. Um, yeah, when I bought it uh, five years ago or so, it was in pretty rough shape and it had a wrap on it. So I spent two years 
uh, at a shop in California, just rebuilding everything on it and painting it. And um, had it here for uh, about a year and a half and then uh, dropped a valve in it. So the motor's been out of it for the last year, uh, getting rebuilt at a shop in California and just got that back uh, so about last week. So here in the next couple of weeks, we'll get the motor back in it and Where is get the it motor? back on. Uh, it's actually at a shop uh, in town. God. Yeah. When people think about Hawaii or when they even think about the big, li big island specifically, they don't really think about car culture. Uh, yeah, no, I think we're uh, a little underrated here, honestly. Yeah, I, yeah, so from what I understand, there's even a couple shops on the island that have dinos. Yeah, yep. Yeah. There's um, one in, in Kona and one in Hilo that I know of, yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. It really is. You know, there's not a ton of people here on this island that are passionate about it, but the people that are passionate, they're, they're legitimately passionate and they're, you know, they, we, they do a lot of stuff. Almost every weekend there's something, whether it's a cruise or SCCA or drag racing or, or a show that, you know, there's, there's something almost every weekend. You know, it's crazy because the island with the most population, Oahu, they don't have a place to go drag racing. They don't yeah. have a racetrack. I mean, the only thing they have is SCCA autocross and it's like in a small parking lot, yeah. right? Um, on top of that, it's very difficult for them to ship their cars over to other islands yes. to race because there's yeah. no ferry anymore. Yeah. Yep. And there hasn't been for so long. Yep. It's incredible to me that a drag strip on this island can survive with just the population on the island. Does it get used for other car events like car meets and? No, not really. There's, you know, it's a, it's nice because they have the drag strip. They do SCCA there. They also run go-karts there. They have a dirt track there. And then I think they also do dirt bikes and stuff like that over there. So there's a lot of different stuff going on over there. So it's every weekend there's something going on over there if it doesn't get rained out. Is it pretty casual in terms of like every Thursday night or every other night you can just show up and put down a time on the drag strip? No, they're only, so the drag strip's closed except for on race weekends. Yeah, so God. there's two race weekends every month. Oh, so, yep. okay. It's kind of something to look forward to every, yeah, every yeah. two weeks. Yeah, and we cross our fingers that it doesn't get rained out. <laughs> got it, got it. All right, so last car. Sorry, there's just so many things that I want to learn about Hawaiian car culture because, you know, I've been to a couple of shows on Oahu and I've been to a couple of meets. I've judged a couple of meets also, and it's great. I love it. I think it's so cool. But of course, you know, for me, the performance aspect is what really drew me into cars in the first yeah. place. And yep. that's what I love. And just seeing all of these vehicles not built for show, while they look amazing, yeah. they're built for go including i'm guessing this nsx yeah i you know i've said every one of my cars i want to you know make have them go down the drag strip and you now the supra definitely has made a lot of passes the nsx has gone down the drag strip a couple times here and a couple times in arizona when i lived back there i had both of those when i lived in arizona um the rx7 has gone down the drag strip the skyline has not um but you know after we get through the break-in period i will get it down the drag strip what so. do you think that motor is going to make, or what? What did you? Uh, expect? It made 720 before, so I think you know should still have that in it. That's a GTT, so it's just rear wheel drive. So um, putting that power down is challenging on that car. Sounds so. like fun though. Yeah, yeah. I you know I know everybody loves the GTR over the GTT. Uh, I like the looks of the the GTR, but I like a rear wheel drive car as well. I feel like they're a little bit more enjoyable to drive. So I had the opportunity to swap that over and I elected not to. Um, so I'm That's awesome. happy with the way it is. But so tell this, me about this. This so, is wide body, like yep. really wide. It was originally built by Umbrella Auto Design. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but they're up in the uh, Portland area, I believe. And this was kind of their shop car. And uh, yeah, I bought this eh, roughly 10 years ago. And um, it was supercharged at the time, and uh, I've swapped it over to a twin turbo setup. I think it makes uh, this is 630, what this makes. You're so yeah. casual. You had a supercharger on here, and it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Uh, you know, when you're used to driving the Supra with 900 horsepower, you know, you get in this, and you know, this it is... did feel a little underpowered. So, this is so cool. Twin turbo. 
See, I couldn't even tell. Yeah, yeah, most people can't tell until they, you know, they notice that, and then they're like, wait a second. <laughs> but yeah, the Science of Speed built um, the motor on this car and did the turbo setup there in uh, Tempe, and they're, they do very good work, and it's you know, very discreet. Well, I mean, it's... That's the only discreet part about this yeah, vehicle. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's, <laughs> probably, it's true. Yeah. This is so, it looks like a JGTC, like, yeah. or Super GT body kit. It's just so wide. Like, look at this. I can't believe how wide this thing is. So then where What's are that? the turbos actually mounted? Are they underneath? Yep, yep, they're underneath. Yeah, it's a sorcery wide body kit. A lot of people think it's a veal side kit, but it's a, a sorcery kit. It's supposedly one of two in the country. Uh, but is it pretty you know, laggy it then? No, no, which is wonderful. This, this is my favorite car to drive. Everybody asks me like, oh, which car do you love to drive the most? And you know, I always thought it would be the Supra, but it really is this car because this car makes good power at any RPM. The Supra, I'm waiting until you know, 5,500 RPM before that turbo really spools. Uh, but this, it's, the power's always there. This is like your loudest looking car. Yeah, it looks definitely, yep. Insane. Yeah. What do people say when they see you drive this in Hawaii, like on, um, on the roads here? Yeah, I think it's a little bit, especially, you know, being kind of out in the country, it doesn't really fit in with, you know, the horses and cows that are walking around in the neighbor's yard. Um, so it definitely turns some heads. I think most people are just confused as to what it is. And it really throws them for a loop when it's like, yeah, it's 30 years old. Yeah. So it's a 92. So that really throws people off. And you know, they're like, oh, is this the new NSX? When I tell them it's an NSX, it's like, oh, it's the new NSX. It's like, no, 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 this is the old NSX. Um, no. Which one of your cars run right now? Um, the FD runs. This is really uh, just missing oil at this point in an oil pan gasket. I drained that the other day to swap that. This is missing injectors. I sent those out to be cleaned. That's missing the motor. That's missing a few things. <laughs> that's that's missing it should just have one of those notes, do not start or something yeah. <laughs> yeah. on the steering wheel. Yeah. My New Year's resolution was to get all my cars here at my house since the Hako I said is still in California and get them all running. Cause it's like, there's always something you know, that is not running. So that's my goal is to get everybody running in here, so. I'm glad I was able to talk to you about your collection and all your builds now, but I'm bummed that <laughs> it's not next year after your New Year's resolution, yeah. after you make your New Year's resolution, yeah. um, when all of these things are running because I would love to hear them and experience them. And before we started rolling, we're kind of talking about how you got into the Hawaiian car culture because you actually moved here without your cars first. Yep. Yep. And then over time, the locals, they, they kind of like embraced you as like a newcomer in, in the car community, I guess. Yeah. So how yep. did all that happen? Yeah. So we, when we moved over, um, we were just kind of testing the waters on, on living here. So we left a lot behind, including the Supra and the NSX. Those were the only two that I owned at the time. And um, at the time, the drag strip was closed. So no racing was going on. Um, there weren't a lot of car events, or at least I couldn't find them. I didn't see it. I wasn't really on social media at the time. So, you know, I think that's how everybody does everything, but it just, I never really saw much. So yeah, I was really debating on just selling the cars and kind of moving on from that part of my life. Um, but ultimately when we did decide to stay here and send all of our stuff over, I did decide, you know, Hey, I can love these cars, even if it's just me and there's nobody else doing it. And, um, yeah, when they got here and I started driving them around, then it's, you know, not surprising somebody comes up to you and is like, oh, you know, I've never seen this car on island before. Everybody kind of knows what everybody has. So when something new shows up, um, you know, everybody's aware of it. So because the, the, the island itself, it's called Big Island for a reason. It's actually bigger than every other island. Yep. Uh, and the land mass is actually pretty big, but the population is small. Yes. Yeah, I think somewhere around 300,000 people on this island yet. I think they say all the other islands combined physically could fit on this island. So so then when you moved here and you've already lived here, you didn't have these cars here. You didn't even know there was a big car community here then? No, um, I didn't. And I think probably, again, a lot of that's 
because at the time I wasn't doing any social media. I didn't have Instagram or Facebook or anything like that. So, you know, driving around, you'd, you'd see a few, a few cars, but, um, you know, I, I never saw any big shows or really any cruises. I saw a couple mo motorcycle cruises and, and the truck guys here are pretty legit. So I'd see them doing a cruise every now and then. But yeah, I didn't really think there was much going on. Um, but I think it was really just because I, you know, once I got on Instagram, then it's like, oh, okay, you follow a few people and they're the ones um, putting everything together. And then it's like, oh yeah, there's a car community here. Um, and they're, they're doing stuff every weekend. There's something going on. Yeah. And it, from what you can tell, or from, from you hanging out with the local community, or now you're part of it, um, it's kind of also changed what you like too a little bit. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I was definitely a nineties guy, um, when I moved here and definitely still am. Um, but yeah, the, the seven, the, the old school stuff they have here, especially the seventies stuff, um, is, is awesome. They have awesome, awesome seventies and eighties stuff here. And it really kind of, since I checked most of my other boxes in the nineties stuff, it's like, Oh, I'll start, you know, looking at this other stuff. And yeah, it, uh, it really got my interest in other things, which is, you know, which is dangerous. I don't need, I don't need any more, any more things to chase after. Right. Because the population is so small here compared to the other islands. Uh, I'm assuming these cars are pretty rare here um yeah i think um i'd say there's probably four i guess four or five other supras on island mark fours uh, yes mark fours um a couple mark threes i've seen two mark twos running around um i believe there are actually three nsx's two helo side and then there's one a silverstone in kona that i've left my phone number on a few times i always see it in the <laughs> the guy drives it to the home depot parking lot it's interesting to me. I always see it sitting in the Home Depot parking lot, but I think he's a snowbird that brings it out. But yeah. I think that's so funny that you see uh, another NSX owner. You're like, you're my friend. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, let's be friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to sit and talk to him. And I'm, yeah. I'm in my Tacoma, so he's like, right. you know, what is this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, Are there any other R34s here? No 34s that I'm aware of. It's possible something's hiding somewhere, but I, I don't believe so. Um, there's a 33 Hilo side and a 32 Kona side. Um, and there's a few FDs running around. It's yeah. just so crazy to me that like, you're the, you have the sole R34 on the island, potentially. Maybe, 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 like you said, there is one hiding out waiting, who knows, for yeah. whatever, or yeah. motor, or... Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, but, uh, I definitely think you know now. Now that they're becoming legal, yeah. um, that you'll start to see them more often. There, you know, there's a lot of people here that love those cars. So, yeah. um, you know, it won't surprise me in the next year or two if one shows up. I know a couple guys over on Oahu that are are bringing them in. So, so cool. All right, so you're gonna yeah. do a little launch for us? Sure, yeah. This vehicle, you don't actually have to warm it up or anything, huh? No, I mean, it, it does have a drag strip mode uh, for optimal power. It will preheat the batteries to, you know, the certain temperature that it can discharge the most power as fast as possible. Um, so I think that's probably somewhere around like 80 degrees. I love being able to take this thing, drive 50 miles down to the drag strip, run, Glow nine second passes against legitimate race cars, go do shopping after that, drive home with air conditioned seats and a beautiful stereo, and still use only half the battery. You know, this thing's got 400 miles worth of range. So even going down drag strip, it takes 10 miles of range to make a quarter, sec, uh, quarter mile pass. So uh, then, um, do you think it would go easily under uh, nine seconds if you just? went with slicks or if you went with like drag street um, drag radios so i i don't know i at, at the beginning it wasn't it wasn't losing traction like when it was when, before i took any weight out of it you know it doesn't spin the tires on the street it didn't need the prep surface but once i started taking out the interior upgrading you know taking weight out of the wheels and the brakes it's, it's spinning now. So I'm hoping with that prep, I won't need the wheels because you don't want the sticky tires on the top end of the track. You know, your, your rolling resistance is hurting the car. So if you gain traction with sticky tires out of the hole, you're hurting your mile per hour. So it's like you're gaining some time here, but giving it up on the top end, I, I don't know if you're actually getting 
your eight second pass. The two people that, have, that I'm aware of that have run eights um, had weight out of the car and they were running um, a 20 inch wheel and they were, you know, probably on, I think like an, on an R888 or something like that. Unfortunately, I can't get an R888 in a 19 mm. that has the sidewall that this car needs. So um, I probably should have gone with a 20 inch wheel, but I was trying to go with the smallest wheel, you know, get, yeah. my mindset was wait, 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 right. get as much out as I can to try to get it into the eights that way. So are you actually gonna put it in drag mode? Yeah, I'll put it in drag strip mode and it'll allow you to do a true launch where you hold, you hold the brake and floor it and let off the brake. Whoa! That's not dramatic at all. It just goes so fast. It didn't chirp or anything. No, it it definitely feels like it, it pulled some power. It doesn't, doesn't like these 21 inch wheels. It definitely does a lot better on a 19 with some sidewall on it. Um, Wait, so then but, this this weekend when you go to the drag strip, you're going to put the 19s on? Yeah, yep. And what tires are those? It's a stock uh, Pirelli P0. God. Um, and, you know, for the power they're dealing with, I, they do a pretty darn good job. It's interesting because um, what it's doing uh, in order for it to launch properly is putting power down or there's like... Uh, yeah, it's, I think it is preloading. It's preloading. Yeah. Because I could see the whole thing like lower yeah. from everything just being yep. under stress, I yeah. guess. And I, that's and that's in, actually where it'll be interesting to race the electric Supra versus this because I'm not going to be able to like preload that car. I mean, maybe someday we'll get to that point, but this has a lot of technology in it that is going to be an advantage over that car. But I think we'll have a horsepower advantage with that car and hard to argue with, you know, 1200 pounds lighter. So that'll be, I think, a thing of traction. If that car can get traction, then I think it will win. But this, versus this? Yeah. Even so. though this has claimed, what, a thousand two horsepower? Yeah, I think they, they say what a thousand twenty is what these are. Yeah. But then the Supra, you're expecting it to be there's like a range of power that potentially could be, right? Yeah, so yeah, and I think it just comes down to the, I don't understand why they're, I, when you look online, you see different people claiming different things. Even companies selling the motors are claiming different things. But I've seen as high as, was it six, like 675 or 645, something like that. So if I, I look at it. And that's from two motors. That's from one motor. Oh, that's from one motor. Yeah, so then. The, that's the rear performance drive unit, which is what's in that car right now and we're putting a second one of those in there. So basically having two rear motors in that car, instead of going with a typical front motor, sometimes when people electric swap and they wanna be all wheel drive, they'll put a, a front motor. Cause the front motor on this is significantly smaller than the rear. Got it. Okay, yeah. so that's why you're thinking it potentially could be faster than this on the drag strip because yeah. it's two rear motors. Two rear motors, yeah. And again, anywhere from Depending on how you, where you look, as low the lowest I can find is like 450, and the highest 645. So you double that. And what what about torque? Um, I think the torque um, is is really a tough one. You know, the, every time I see them on the dyno, they're throwing a crazy number. You know, the dynos aren't really designed, but I've seen numbers as high as like 700 to like a thousand horsepower on a single one mm. of those motors. Um, and I think it's almost like dynos need to be adjusted for that, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's not like, um, a, a true, like you can't, there's no like one-to-one -one gear or whatever. It's always one-to-one -one gear, yeah, right? So yeah. it's not like you're, you're matching the, um, whatever's coming out of the crank to the one-to-one -one gear ratio yeah. to the roller or hub dyno, whatever. Um, this, it just goes all the way to top speed from yeah. zero yep. with the same amount of torque yeah right maximum torque all the way i think it has some torque that falls off on it um mm -hmm. i haven't looked at uh, there were some sheets that i looked at before when we were trying to figure out which motors to go with because originally when we decided we were going to upgrade the car i was actually trying to source the motors from this mm -hmm. i said let's put a plaid motor in that thing because it'll definitely beat it then because you have the same amount of power you just have 1200 pounds less that you're moving. So it'll, it'll eat its lunch at that point. Right. Um, but um, 
I'm not aware of anybody controlling these motors yet. You know, AEM uh, can control those motors. A couple other companies can. No one, as of right now, can control these. So it's like, are you really going to go putting a motor in a car that no one can control yet and just hope that somebody, yeah, you know, eventually, yeah, and, and they Flag will. swapped eventually. Yeah, yeah, there's. I've heard there's a couple people talking about doing it, so I think it will happen. Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much for showing yeah. us your collection, really. Yeah, my so pleasure. Cool. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.